Welcome everyone. I'm Dr. John White, Chief Medical Officer at WebMD, and you're watching your health on tech. Cardiovascular disease, heart disease, is still a leading cause of death around the world. And the challenge is that much of it can be prevented, but we have to be able to know how to detect it early on. And we do some good tests, but it's different labs. Sometimes you have to go on a treadmill. It can be challenging to reach a large range of people. But what if I told you your eyes could tell us about our hearts? My guest today says the eyes are the window, not to the soul, but to the heart. Joining me is Professor Alicia Brunitska. She is Professor of Statistical Epidemiology at St. George's University of London. Professor, thanks for joining me. You're very welcome. So did we get it all wrong? The eyes aren't the window to the soul, they're the window to the heart. How does this work? Tell us what you've been studying. Well, we've for a long time, actually, we've had an interest in the small blood vessels at the back of the eye. So the back of the eye is called the retina. And on the surface of the retina, are lots of blood vessels and they're quite tiny and they're not as big as the ones that you'd have in your heart. But generally there are a lot of diseases that can affect the smaller blood vessels. Because at the end of the day, we have those capillary beds over our entire body supplying all our organs to make them function well. And so the blood vessels we think tell us an awful lot about the vascular health of the body. And so we've been particularly interested in their form and structure. And we've been using artificial intelligence systems to extract information about the blood vessels at the back of the eye. Well, sometimes during eye exams, they'll look at our blood vessels and they'll say something about high blood pressure, or they'll say diabetes, a condition that is, you know, called diabetic retinopathy. So what's different today in terms of being able to, to figure out the relationship to the heart? Is it the use of these AI tools that you reference? The AI component is a very specific component of it, which we trained it to distinguish at the back of the eye between arterioles and venules. And we extract from those vessels quite a lot of information about their size and shape. So what we're talking about is actually trying to pick up a retinal biomarker that is a precursor to the development of disease. So does that mean people won't yet have disease such as blockages or that it's early on? Probably a mix of both really in the sense that you you know disease is on a spectrum from absolutely nothing to when it gradually progresses then you get frank disease and then the disease progresses so you could pick it up anywhere along that spectrum from absolutely healthy to when you actually develop the disease so the idea is is that you'd pick up people hopefully as early as possible. Could it locate where the disease might be? So as you know, in heart disease, we often say it's in a certain blood vessel. Um, can it give us that type of information or is it more qualitative? It's a quantitative score. You, we can develop what's called a risk score by knowing a little bit of information about you. So it's the image and some simple questions. You know, Everyone knows how old they are, your gender, and in, also in particular, very important is whether you smoke or not. And also, are you already maybe on blood pressure medications or, or have you had a heart attack or stroke already? You know, are you, do you have diabetes? So the idea is, is that it's a risk screening tool for all. When will it be used? Um, once a year as part of a vision exam? Will it require something different? What's, the, what's this going to look like? Our current view is that it be something that you could implement when you go to get your eyes examined. And I don't think it necessarily have to be done every year. If the infrastructure is in place to do it every year, then that would be great. Um, but the idea would be to try and promote people to go and get a full workup so that you can then go and find out what you're saying, which blood vessel is it, where is the problem? I don't know how it is in the States, but in the UK, when you're over the age of 50, 55, the idea is that you go for a regular, health check which includes cardiovascular assessment but the uptake is poor you know even though we have a national health service so people just don't go so we see this as a system to try and get people to become more aware also of their own health take control and think okay i've had my they said that my risk is such and such 
and that actually I should go and see my physician or as we call it here, primary care practitioner, because it may well be that I would benefit from an early intervention. And we should point out, we're not talking about visual acuity. You know, I'm, I'm wearing the eye chart. So it doesn't mean that if you have poor vision, that that means you're at increased risk for cardiovascular disease, for heart disease, does it? That, that's not what we're saying, because we really need to look at the blood vessels, as you point out, behind the eyes. It's not, not to do with your vision, how well you see. It's specifically to do with the vascular health that we assess by looking at the vessels in the eye. What's so special about the eyes that tells us this important information? You know, I led with a leading cause of disease around the world, heart disease. And now by getting information from our eyes, we may be able to reduce that. What's so special? The beautiful opportunity about the eyes is a complete non-invasive way to see the microvasculature in the human body. You know, we don't have to cut anybody open to look at it. We don't have to do any fancy scans to look at it. It's just a camera. So what's the beauty of the eyes is that they give you an indication of what's going on elsewhere in the body. Because at the end of the day, the whole vascular system in the eyes, in the whole body is connected, not just in the eye. You bring up lots of good points. Why hasn't someone thought about this earlier in terms of the blood vessels in our eye? can relate to blood vessels throughout our body, especially in our heart. I think people have tried to do it actually for some time, but a combination of methodology and how to do it has been challenging. And I think it's a combination of knowing the information you need to extract from the images that might have utility, and then actually building what we call a risk model. And that's actually quite a it's not an easy thing to do. It's quite a complicated statistical problem to actually build the model that actually predicts what you're hoping it's going to predict. This could be a major factor in reducing heart disease risk. When do you think this might be available for the general public? I know you mentioned this is still undergoing research. If all things go well, what's your prediction? It's very difficult. We know you have new innovations. You'd like to start trying them out tomorrow, but with the way things are, we'd have to do an efficacy study to check that actually it does what it said is designed to do. And that in a real life setting with real people in the high street, it kind of does exactly what you found in your research study of 100. I mean, 100,000 people is a lot of people, but you can't just assume that what you've done in a research study translates to real life settings. So the next thing would be to do a study in a real life setting. And if you had a big study, it wouldn't take long to get those answers but no um, governing health body is going to allow you to implement it tomorrow. So a little bit, little bit more work to do, but very encouraging in terms of when you think about the pathophysiology of disease. Yeah, no, it is, it is very, and we're actually, you know, we're really excited because it's generated a tremendous amount of interest. And like, you know, also interviewing with you and sort of 14,000 downloads of our article in one month is, um, is quite unusual. Well, the eyes have special meaning. I'd say it's not unusual because people are always very focused on the eyes. And Professor, I want to thank you for taking the time today to share what might actually be a game changer in how we evaluate heart disease risk. Thank you. Thank you for having me. If you have questions, drop us a line. You can email me at drjohn at webmd.net. Thank you.